immorality, anti-Semitism, and replacement theology are eroding the foundations of biblical Christianity. Hoyavel presents the Heartland Connection, where Christians are equipped to walk out the truth in God's Word and to support the land and people of Israel. Shalom and welcome to the Heartland Connection. Today we have a very special program. We're going to be talking about Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av. We have Rabbi Onadav Zar here with us to teach us today. Welcome, Rabbi Onadav. Shalom, Zach. All right, so <clears throat> we'll start off with the basics. Rabbi Onadav, what exactly is Tisha B'Av? What is the ninth of Av? Okay. We, like everyone here is know, mm. uh, we have, we had temple on mm. the Mount Temple in Jerusalem. Mm. That we build 480 years after the Exodus. Mm -hmm. Our King Solomon built it, and it's supposed to bring the blessed to all the world, to put in the focus, in the middle of the world, the holiness, the worship of God. And 410 years later, there was a destruct destruction of this temple mm. on the 9th of Av. Mm -hmm. And again, after 70 years, we built the second temple. Mm -hmm. And again, after 420 years, was the destruction of the second temple on the ninth of Av, Tisha B'Av. Mm -hmm. And we uh, rel relate, we remind it mm -hmm. every year in this uh, day on the calendar, the, the, the day of the destruction. Mm -hmm. And it's not only morning, 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 mm -hmm. but also a reminder that we have to build it again. Mm. And every year that we didn't build it, we it's like it's distracting our days mm. again and again. Mm. Wow. So <clears throat> just to make sure everybody understands, Av is one of the months on the Hebrew biblical calendar. That's right. And the it's fifth the month. fifth month. Since <clears throat> Nisan, since Passover. Uh -huh. So, so we, uh, on the Gregorian calendar, we might get confused because the first month is in January. But on the biblical calendar, it starts later, like or somewhere around April will be the first month. And then so on the fifth month, so that's why uh, now we're coming up, we've entered into the month of Av, and the ninth of Av will be this coming uh, Sunday. That's right. Uh, will be the ninth. Uh, so just want to make sure everybody's on the same this page. Year. With this, this year, this year, it's Sunday. <coughs> mm -hmm. Maybe comment on the months. Uh -huh. On the, the general calendar, the, the month March, mm -hmm. March was the first month also. I can prove it. What's the uh, a the 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 tenth month on the October? Or, okay, yeah. What is it mean octa? Uh, it's eight. It's eight. And what's hmm. the twelfth month? December. December. Right. What is deca? Ten. Ten. It's not twelve. Hmm. And. The, the March was the first month also, mm -hmm. but later they changed it to make January the, January the first month to fit it with the new year, mm -hmm. the, the birth of, of the Messiah. Uh. So it's, it's not the origin calendar. Uh. The origin is like in the Jewish calendar, mm -hmm. that March is Nisan, is the month of the um, spring, mm -hmm. this is the first month of the year. So hmm. the fifth month 
is av. Uh-huh. Okay. Huh. Is equal to <coughs> may. Mm-hmm. Not to may. Sorry, not to may. The fifth is a ju- July. July. Mm-hmm. Was. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, thank you for, for pointing that out. It's really interesting. Calendars, <clears throat> if you go back and study, it's very interesting. Like the lunar calendar versus the solar calendar and the mix between. And <clears throat> it's a very interesting uh, study uh, on all of that. Um, <clears throat> maybe one day we can do a, do a, a video on just, just talking about those things too. That would be really great. Um, so on Tisha B'Av, if you've mentioned, both temples are destroyed on that very same day. So it's a very, very sad day, a day of mourning. Um, so how do you, how do you mourn? How, what are the customs of uh, Tisha B'Av? First of all, we, we feast, fast. Fast. Fast in mm-hmm. this day. We don't eat and don't drink mm-hmm. and don't wash, mm-hmm. don't wash mm-hmm. and don't uh, use our uh, shoes. Mm-hmm. And also um, don't uh, make a, a, a together wife and husband. Mm-hmm. And a, also we sit on the earth in the synagogue mm. and read the Lamentations scroll mm-hmm. and read a, a new, newer Lamentations that's written by the generations to mourn our destruction. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> so in the synagogue, everybody would sit on the floor. That's right. Uh, and as a sign of mourning. And then, and they do that all day? Are, are they in the synagogue Until all day? Until noon. Until noon, okay. And are, are generally, are you in the synagogue all day on Tisha B'Av or you're also at home? No, or, uh, also at home, home. We are going to sleep and to read something and Mm-hmm. But we can't, uh, uh, we, we can't um, deal with, with something that will uh, 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 help us forget the morning. Mm. We have to be focused. If we read books, it's books about the destruction, about the exile. Mm-hmm. to to feel the the problems of the exile mm. huh. that's good <clears throat> actually speaking of books i recently found a book called a temple in flames it's a really great book for all of you guys who are listening if you want a good book to read it shows the history and gives all the details it's called a temple in flames it's a really good uh book to 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 just learn the history about what happened uh, i think it's specifically about the uh roman Uh, destruction yes it's written, so. right <coughs> write it, it wrote it my brother-in-law Gershon Bar Kochva yeah that, that's right okay yeah so it's a relative of Rabbi Yonadav it's a very trustworthy source and it's it's written they've made it in Hebrew and it's also available in English so yes uh, and I, I read it it's a really great good history not too long but very good uh, details pulling from Josephus and from a lot of different historical accounts it's very good Very good book. I didn't realize that. That was a relative. Okay. So I think for a lot of Christians, <clears throat> we, we, we hear about uh, a temple, and we think that's very physical. That's very, you know, of this, of, of this world, of, of a natural realm. And most mainstream Christianity, they, they, we think in very spiritual terms. And so a lot of people would say, oh, A, a physical temple isn't really that important. And what's important is that we have God within us. We are like the temple, and, and God is within us, and that's really all that matters. A building is it's just, it's just concrete or gold or whatever it is. I made out of it, it's not really that important. So can you help me and our listeners understand why is a physical temple important? Okay. First of all, I want to say that is very, it's very important, the spiritual temple and mm-hmm. spiritual will and spiritual feelings mm-hmm. about the, the good and God and, real, and, and the values and ideas. 
It's very important. Mm -hmm. But can we leave the world with all its problems and say, oh, I'm just a spiritual creature? Mm -hmm. Can we leave it mm -hmm. as it to be mm -hmm. a, 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 without hope to change mm -hmm. it? Hmm. Can, can God agree to leave the world with its problems? God, the kind God hmm. and the merciful kind God hmm. can leave it and say, oh, this world can destroy it, can be destroyed, but the, the soul, the spiritual situation is the only matter of things. Thing? No, mm. it, it can be imagined if even. Mm. God wants to make the good mm. to everything. He created the world, the physical, physical world. He could not create it, mm -hmm. but he created it because he wants to make good to the world. Mm. So how can we leave it with all the cruelty? We can't. Mm. So the temple, the destruction of the temple, I think, focus us in the vision, mm -hmm. the vision, the prophetic vision, to, to like God blessed Abraham, you will br bring the bless to all the nations. And when we read in the Torah about the bless that will accept one who obey the Torah, it's very physical bless. We, we want it. Mm -hmm. It's good, the physical bliss. Uh -huh. And it's <laughs> bad. The, the bad situation, bad physical situation, mm -hmm. is punishment as written in the Torah. So mm -hmm. how can we think to live the bad situation, to say, oh, that's not matter, the physical situation. Mm -hmm. It's not my business. I'm just spiritual. No, mm -hmm. you are spiritual. It's great. And it says that the spirit has to lead the world, mm. but not to erase the world. Mm. And mm. in Tisha B'Av, we have to remember, to remind ourselves, our vision to fix the world. And for fixing the world, to, for bringing the blessed to the physical world, we need to put the holiness in the middle, in the middle of our land, our life, to connect our physical life to the spiritual vows, holiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can do it. We can do it. And this is the, the mission of the temple of, and of mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. to to put the holiness in the, in the middle, mm. in the middle of the physical life, mm -hmm. and show how, how one who loyal to the holiness can bring the happiness to the physical life also. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I think that's, that's so important is, yeah, we can't, we can't, because we were, it's tempting to go one way or one, the other way, the, one of the other extremes. Say, oh, it's only spiritual, and we just want to be up in the clouds and woo, you know somewhere. But but like you said, it's the reality. We are physical. We have to acknowledge it. Or some people make it the other way and say, oh, I don't understand the spiritual, so I'm just going to work hard and be good and and try to do that. But then we miss out on 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 God and in the spiritual aspects. <clears throat> so I think that's really important. Yeah, to find a balance and. Um, and you've talked about that before too, that, that the temple is bringing that balance, it's bringing God's presence to earth. Um, um, so it's not just a heavenly thing up, up in the cloud somewhere. It's, it's coming down to, with us to, to on earth. And we see pictures of that in the Garden of Eden, God's presence being there in uh, the tabernacle in the wilderness, God's presence coming down into the tabernacle. God says, make a, a sanctuary for me, make, make the tabernacle so I can come and dwell in the midst of, of the people, it's like that's his heart. He wa his, wants his presence to be physically, like with us. Um, 
in, in a tangible way. Like like when Solomon dedicated the temple and the glory comes in the cloud, it was like it was a real thing. Like it comes in and we have the spiritual and the physical coming together. Um, and, and I think maybe I, I can speak maybe from the Christian uh, side. Is like I think we don't quite understand maybe uh, what we're what we're missing or or what we should be wanting. The idea that God's like a literal presence could be on the earth is, is a little bit hard to even, obviously it's, it's hard to understand because we don't understand God uh, fully. Um, but I think it's, it's important for us to realize that we don't have this thing that God really wants. God really wants to be his presence to be on the earth. And I, I think just processing that and realizing, wow, we are missing this thing. We need to work towards being purified and, and cleansing from sin and, and being ready to receive his presence uh, on the earth. That's, that's what he wants. That's what his, his will is. Um, and so being here in Israel and, and being on the Temple Mount and learning from the Jewish people, it just those things become a little bit clearer, like, wow, that is the ultimate goal for us to be able to worship God, for his presence to be among us, um, and for him to enable, strengthen us to overcome sin and death and those things. It's like, wow, that all just makes so much sense that this is the big vision uh, that we're all um, working towards and, and wanting to uh, see happen. So um, so you're saying that the, the, we want to see the temple rebuilt, and I agree with you. I think that's, that's what we want to see. No, to see only, to rebuild it. To, to do it, to see to it happen, it. To, to rebuild it. Um, so what, what do you, where do you think we're at right now? It, there's a lot of you know, Jewish people are, are returning back to the land of Israel. Um, you know, can we, can we say like, what, what are we, what are we waiting for? Or, or what, what's going to happen to where we can actually rebuild, uh, the temple? Really, I don't know, but, mm -hmm. but I can recognize some problems before. Right. <laughs> First of all, it's <clears throat> our will as a nation. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't represent all the people of our uh, Jewish people. And there are many people that don't think it's something we need now. And we have to fix it to educate. Mm -hmm. Second is the 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 position of the nations mm. also mm. our uh, friends and our enemies even our friends are not sure that this is what we have to do mm. we can't do something against all the world it's not the way we have to uh, to do our steps Like we say every time, God doesn't want us to trust only miracles. Mm -hmm. We have to consider the reality uh, considerations and think what is right to do now. Of course, we want to do the to to obey the laws of God, the mitzvot, but also we have to check if we can do it now. So we want to build the temple mm -hmm. and we have the responsibility to, to make the situation that allow us to build it. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Because <clears throat> I think, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of people and a lot, even the Christian circles who think, oh, the, the Jewish people, they're going to, uh, you know, set up a, a temple and the Antichrist uh, is going to come in and, and it's, he's a really bad person. He's going to set up his uh, worship of him in the temple. And, and of, the, of whom? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like... <laughs> Who uh, is Antichrist? Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it totally does not make sense at all here in Israel mm -hmm. to, like, to think that way. Um, that because obviously I know from knowing you, it's not like you're going to be like, oh yeah, here's this really, um, you know, person who's against the Torah and, and against anything. And we're going to put him and worship him in the temple, something like that. Like, 
I, I think that part of what the Christians think is correct, that there, that there could be a person like uh, the Greeks when they came in and set up an anti-Messiah idol in, in the temple. Uh, you know, that type, type, type of scenario is, is, is possible. It has, it has happened um, that, that, that uh, a person against God came and took God's holy temple and, turned and, and desecrated it and, and made it something very evil, um, a worship idols within there. Um, but then we have the Jewish people, the Maccabees, who come in and cleanse the temple and and make it a place for God's presence to come to. And then we have the amazing story of the Maccabees and Hanukkah, uh, where, the, where the temple is rededicated and the miracles with the oil and the light. Um, <clears throat> and I think, uh, yeah, it just, it, it makes so much sense to me that we need this this uh, temple that is, is, is part of what God commanded in the Torah. It's what He wants. He wants to dwell among His people. And then if the, if there are nations and people that are against that, they're against God. Uh, and if there are people who are for that, they're with God. And so I see you. You're for that. You're for enabling God's presence to come and dwell on the earth as he talks about here in the scripture. And so I can be for that. And I'm very much against any nations that come and say, no, it's, it's, you know, the temple's bad. God's presence on earth is, is, you know, not relevant anymore. Uh, those kind of ideas, like, uh, somehow after being here and, and reading through the scriptures and realizing, wow, over and over again in the scriptures, you know, in the Psalms says, I have established this as my dwelling place. This is my dwelling place forever. Um, those type of scriptures are like, wow, this, it really makes a lot of sense. And the whole idea that God has chosen Jerusalem and Mount Zion as the central place for his presence to dwell and then for that message of light to go out to the nations like the, the whole thing, it just makes so much sense after being here and seeing it and then reading the scripture and go, whoa, okay, that's what that means. Um, and, and like you said, the big vision of, 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 of um, Israel being the place where God can come and dwell and that light uh, to go out. It's such a beautiful picture. Um, and the temple is a very key part of that beautiful picture that, that needs to happen. Or do you have any thoughts? We, we, we have a phrase that says to Titus, mm -hmm. distracted Titus. house you distract. Mm -hmm. Because the temple, sometimes someone can think that temple is a, from itself the the Mm. The resolution to all the problems in the world. Mm. And it's not true. Mm. Because if we lose the vision, and if we don't use the temple as the, the center of the holiness in the world, mm. but as a place of a worshiping, technical worshiping God, mm -hmm. it will distract it. Mm. It's, it's like I said uh, former that earlier, that spiritual is very important. The physical situation has to reveal the spiritual mm -hmm. situation. And if it's become just technical existence of the uh, physical mm -hmm. building, it's nothing. Mm. It's distra distracted before the Romans came. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's a good point. So basically what you're saying is on some level, if, if the spiritual and physical aren't connected, then it's not fulfilling its purpose, and it is just a building. That's um, right. And that's why we read the lamentation, Lamentations. Mm -hmm. We mourn not only the distracted destruction of the physical temple, Mm. We mourn also the losing of the vision of the spiritual temple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God's presence uh, in, in the temple. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really good. Um, so one more question. Uh, we, we know a little bit about the first and second temples. Will, will the third temple, when it's built, be different than the first two? there be differences? There, there is a very precise uh, descrip description 
of the third temple on Yechezkel. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, the, the shape is different. Mm-hmm. But it's not the, the important detail. The importance, important is that we will build the spiritual building well, stable. And the physical building will reveal the spiritual building. Mm. And this time it will be a forever. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you know, the world made great journey since the second temple until today. And we have the chance to do it now with a, with, with the right a, a cooperation of the nations, like the verse says, um, because my house will call prayer house to all the nations. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons that the first and second temples destructed is that we couldn't, um, we couldn't stand the, the distance between the uh, Jewish uh, faith to the pagan world. And we go after paganism and sinned. Mm -hmm. And now the world is much better. Mm -hmm. And the belief is uh, uh, more pure Mm -hmm. of all the nations. Even the pagans are less pagans than mm-hmm. they were on the uh, time of the second temple. Mm-hmm. And we can uh, hope that this time it will be the right way. Mm-hmm. That's very good. All right, any, any last thoughts on Tisha B'Av before we wrap it up? Maybe we, we have another uh, phrase of the rabbi that if the nations would know mm. all the bliss that the world accepts from the temple, they would not destroy it, but help to build it. Mm. We have to, to educate and to uh, spread the message mm-hmm. to the nations that the building of the temple will mm. help all the nations to build their families, to educate their children, mm. to improve their uh, act in the world, the economy and the professional and everything mm. will be better, will be mm. precise and a great bless can come on all the world if we just build the temple the right way and the right meaning mm-hmm. in physical and spiritual. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, wow, this has been a really, really great discussion. Thank you so much, Rabbi Onoda, for giving us insights into this and helping us understand the importance of the temple and, and what the Jewish community is doing and what we can do to join in with you. really appreciate you taking time to do that. <clears throat> And I also want to say to all of you guys who are listening and uh, speak to you Christians, because I think this is kind of a very um, <laughs> out of the box, definitely not a mainstream Christian idea that the temple would be important. Uh, but I encourage you, dig into the Word of God, study it. Um, we also have a book that one of our staff members, uh, not my brother-in-law, but my brother-in-law's brother, uh, wrote a book, Benjamin Hilton, uh, wrote a book called Jesus Loves the Temple. And if you're a Christian and you're like, how in the world can 
you, Zach, as a Christian, to be sitting there saying that the temple should be rebuilt. And I strongly encourage you uh, to read Ben's book. He does a great job of going through and explaining from a Christian perspective why a temple in Jerusalem is important. So I strongly encourage you to read that book and just and read the Bible. Go and look up the temple and God's presence and the tabernacle and these things. It's 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 all over the scriptures uh, talking about this vision of having God's presence dwelling in Jerusalem and and that light going out through Israel and out to all the nations. So I encourage you to dig into this and uh, and study it. It's it's amazing, amazing thing to to learn about. And I think that's what we all desire as followers of God. We want his presence to be in our lives. We want his will to be done through us. And I really believe this is one of the big areas where, where us as Christians need to align ourselves more with God's will and his ways. So thank you for taking time to uh, to listen and, and to be part of this study together and discussion with Rabbi Yonadav. Really appreciate you joining us today. If you have any feedback on this or questions about what in the world are you talking about in that place, whatever, you can send me an email at zach at highyville.com. would love to talk more and, and uh, talk more about this very, uh, I think it's, it's, it's an unusual topic within a lot of Christian circles. So if you have questions, feel free to send me an email. would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. And may God bless you out of Zion.